Mindfulness-Based Relapse Prevention, or as we refer to it commonly, MBRP. It's designed to bring together what we see from our, our research um, and what we hear from our clients, what's, what is helpful in helping people change their behavior. So the program is an integration of cognitive behavioral and meditative practices um, in a way that each session can bring those two ways, those two approaches that we've seen in the research to be effective together in an integrated form. As originally designed, it was a, it's an eight-week program, so it can be disseminated fairly easily in treatment settings. So people meet once a week for about two hours um, and learn skills. They learn from the very beginning what is, what is mindfulness, what isn't it. Um, a lot of people have some preconceived notions about meditation. Uh, so we start right at the beginning saying, you know, this is something anyone can do. Um, it's not some weird thing. You have to go to the top of a mountain and dress a certain way and, you know, clear your mind of all thoughts. Um, it's actually something that's really accessible to everyone. And, uh, and how might it be useful in your own life? And how can we integrate that also with things we know about uh, the way that we think and how to change our thinking and how that affects our behavior, things that come from more of a cognitive behavioral um, format. And over the eight weeks, um, the intention is to help people build these skills and see how it integrates into their life. So we start with what is meditation? What is mindfulness? What does that mean? And in a very experiential way, uh, we don't do much lecturing or, or um, teaching per se. It's much more experiential. We do, we sit around together and we, um, we practice together and we listen to people's experiences with this practice to let them discover for themselves uh, what, what happens when they pay attention to their own experience and then how to apply that uh, in their lives. So we work over the course of the, of the eight weeks in helping people bring these aspects of paying attention, um, being with things that are uncomfortable in a way that's different so they're not just automatically reacting as most of us do. Um, how can we bring these into our lives in a way that Certainly, of course, applies to addiction. That's the whole reason they're here. But also just general day-to-day -day living, being less reactive, being more kind and compassionate, being more intentional in our actions. And say so that's, that's at the, the heart of the program is helping people be more aware of their own experience, become an expert on your own experience, and learn how to um, be with things that are difficult in a more skillful way and a more kind and compassionate way. So MBRP is an integration of mindfulness practice and CBT and behavioral principles. So there are elements certainly of that in there. I think where the, the differences between, or one of the differences between a mindfulness-based approach and say CBT or more traditional therapy is there's a kind of a um, attitude or assumption in traditional therapy that I as a therapist know something that you don't know and I'm going to teach you some skills, and you're going to implement those skills in your life, and things are going to go better for you, and we're going to reduce your symptoms. Uh, in MBRP, it's, or in MBIs in general, I think we zoom out a little bit, and it's more let's practice ways together that you can become an expert on yourself. What do I know? I don't know your experience. I don't know what you should do. How would I? Um, I have some ideas of practices that have been helpful for other people, but the intention of those practices are to help you to see what's going on more clearly so that you can decide what works for you and what doesn't work for you, rather than me telling you what works for you and doesn't work for you. I think another key difference is that we're not trying to reduce symptoms. I mean, psychology in general, oftentimes the, the goal is symptom reduction. You know, if your depression score is here, let's get it here. If you're drinking, let's get you to stop drinking. In MBRP and MBIs, it's, the, it's a much bigger picture than that. It's, it's let's look at how this is all working and what are you doing that's serving you and actually nourishing and, and making you happy in a real way and what are things that you are doing in your life, whether it's ways you're thinking or behaviors that are actually perpetuating suffering and not making you happy and why is that? What's going on that, that you engage in those behaviors? Um, and here are some practices for you to be able to observe that for yourself. So I, as your therapist, am not going to sit here and tell you what you need to do. Not my job, and what do I know? I don't know. 
what I can do is um, help share some practices with you so that you can start to see that for yourself. So in that sense, it's absolutely a therapy. It's transformational. It's helping people change their lives and their behavior. And the ways that it's different is that in this process here, I'm not try- I don't have an agenda. My only agenda is to be curious with you so that you can learn what's happening for yourself and you can see it. I'm not trying to get you to see something specific or to change this behavior. I, it's much more humble and curious and relaxed than that. It's just a process of how can we together sit down and look at what's going on with you and your life and your thoughts and um, so you can have a better understanding of, of how, how these cycles keep perpetuating and what you can do to reduce your suffering, to have more freedom in your life, more choice. So a question that comes up, Uh, both in my own work and also that I hear from other people, is is this, um, can this be a standalone treatment? Can we just go into, let's say, an addiction center and this is what, this is all people get? Is this enough? I don't think it's a simple answer. For some people, yes. For others, no. I think what I'll speak MBRP specifically is not is individual therapy. And so, Let's say a client is coming in and they have some trauma that is uh, that is unresolved, it's new, it's fresh, they haven't come in contact with this much before, and that may come up in a group. The group isn't designed to work individually with that person in, in coping with that trauma and specific trauma skills. It's certainly the process and practice, absolutely, and the data bear this out, helps people with working with trauma, but there may also be a need at some time for that, for there to be additional support. So it can be helpful to have other therapy um, that complements this, maybe someone seeing an individual therapist with this. Um, But for other people, that's not, that's not the case. Other people, they come to this, these groups and this is, this is all they do and it's tremendously helpful. I think that's a it's a really important question for the clinician and the client to work on together is to maybe talk at the beginning of the group and get an understanding of what other supports do you have in your life, what other things are happening in your life. Are there other people that you may be able to go to if things um, arise that, that might be um, served by some other kind of supportive therapies as well? 